Otherwise, what does he say? The consequence of not doing that is. Curse. curse. He's gonna what? Curse the land. Is the United States cursed? Say yes. Because if it's not happening in the home, God says I'm gonna curse the land. Why do we have trouble? Because dads are not being obedient to God. Guess what? We can transform our land. Remember? He's gonna heal our land. We see Ken? If we do our jobs, if we take care of our responsibilities, if we take God seriously and say, how do I figure this out? What can I do instead of causing anger in my kids? Because remember, you have to remove the bad and put the good. You can't just remove the bad and just leave it empty because it's going to be filled with bad again. So, Paul knew what he was saying. He's saying, okay, instead of doing the bad, you've got to do the good. Instead of mistreating your kids, treat your kids even better. Transformation of the land depends on it. Your country depends on it. Your church depends on it. And we will talk about how we embitter our children. All the details, all the good, the bad, and the ugly, or mostly the bad and the ugly. Okay? And then figure out, well, how do we do it instead? Instead of that, what do we do? Okay? And I have, <clears throat> it's an amazing journey, as a matter of fact. I have to share this with you because it's the overflow of my heart. <clears throat> Only recently have I actually been able to uh, do a really good job of growing orchids. My wife and I have been married 20 years in June, and for the past probably uh, 17 and a half years, I didn't do a really good job of, of growing orchids. I thought they were really pretty and she liked them, so I gave them to her, but they didn't last long. Okay. I think the, the ones that lasted the longest was maybe like four years, okay. and that was it. So I did research and all that stuff and trying to find out and the research wasn't very helpful initially. <clears throat> and then I said, come on, why am I so frustrated? It can't be that difficult. Okay. And then I slid into the philosophy of how do they grow in the wild? Good question. If they grow in the wild, <laughs> nobody touches them. <laughs> Nobody does anything to them. They grow in the wild. So if they grow in the wild, how come I can't grow it? You know, paying attention to them. Okay? So then I said, instead of listening to all the stuff, I'm going to just figure out how they grow in the wild and then apply that principle to it. And they started thriving. Just thriving. Okay? I sat there and I actually enjoyed them. Okay? Never have I seen more than one stem with flowers, okay? Most of the time when we did our just one stem, flowers, after they die, never bloom again, all that stuff, okay? Now I have three stems coming out. All of them are bloomed. Even the ones that already died had another shoot coming out. More flowers, I'm going, yes! Okay? And then I slapped myself in the head and I said, wow. The Lord taught me Beautiful lesson. Just been taking care of my kids. I was so excited about it. And I said, oh, how convicting. How well do I take care of my children and my wife compared to taking care of my kids? And I said, I just started switching gears and I said, this is what I need to do with my kids and with my wife. And I, I'm thinking, and you can ask her, because she's here, sitting right here. For the past, like, eight, to, to eight months to a year, right? And this was recent, maybe six months. She's noticed a difference in the way that I treat her. Okay? Because I thought, man, I'm kind of...
constantly concerned about those orchids. Are they getting enough water? Are they getting too much water? Are they giving enough sunshine? I'm, caring, I'm looking at it I'm, I'm, and admiring it and enjoying it. Am I doing that with my kids? Am I admiring them, enjoying them? Am I saying, do they have enough water? Do they have enough sunshine? Do they have enough fun? Do they have enough joy? Are they getting enough instruction? And with a piece of orchid, God taught me a tremendous lesson. And I grew leaps and bounds. So everybody, all dads, when you leave this place, go to a store, buy some orchids, <laughs> and give them to your wife. And then come to my orchid class. <laughs> take care of it. Because it will teach you tremendously. Okay? Because back in the day, even Back in the day, even before I learned how, I said, my life is directly proportional to the life of this orchid. When they're doing well, I see that I was doing well. When they were doing badly, I was doing badly. And I'm like, man, it's got to be something. And then the Lord actually did use that as an illustration. And he completely opened my mind. You are tremendously important. You are central to the well-being of your house and your wife and your children. You have to grow as a father. You have to grow as a husband. It's just way too much. I'm going to stop right here before we end, and I'm going to pray for you. Okay. And we'll just continue and do a little bit more, and then we'll um, finish. Okay. We long for every dad to have in his heart a cherished, precious passion for his own family. And we pray that you would soften every dad. Give him a heart that has been molded by you. And a greater depth of welcome for your instruction and guidance so that he will be the instrument of growth and vitality in his home. That you are not leaving him alone ill-equipped, that you are more than willing to show him, but you will not replace him. That he needs to take from you and feed his family with it, so that his family will thrive. So that we can truly grant the outside world and each other the picture that the children are a blessing. That your words would be true and every man a liar. And that we will have revival in our household because there is revival in the Father's hearts. that we will shake our communities. We will shake our church. We will shake our country. Because you are shaking us. The alternative is something we totally don't want. I want you to curse our land. We want you to heal our land. And if it is contingent on Dads rising up that have caused us, help us to be transformed. Help 
us to help one another. Enable us. Open our eyes. We can't do it apart from you. We know that. There is no way unless you make a way. Thank you that it has begun in our hearts. That the raising of your word and elevating that to its proper place in our lives is just the beginning. The obedience to your word, as it is necessary, is going to be the full process of transformation for us and our families. One step at a time you are giving us but help us to move forward with momentum. That you will be honored once again, if nowhere else in our home and our church, so that transformation can take place outside. We pray. We desperately pray. In our Lord's name. Let me, uh, let's give a round of applause for And so we only, this two semesters, we only scratch the surface of marriage and uh, parenting. And we're going to continue uh, this topic in the newly founded uh, Marriage and Parenting Fellowship. Uh, I think the, uh, in the Chinese side, you guys uh, already hear the announcement. So the, the core group will be the, uh, the deacons on the English ministry side. We're going to meet every Friday at 8 p.m. And uh, we rotate through each household, so it's six of us. And you are welcome to join us. The, uh, so the, for this fellowship, we are going to continue the format of what we have actually, Pastor Jay introduced us, and we have initiated the scripture-based and the life sharing and hopefully it will be life transformation and to uh, bless every household and the family and so we are going to start first uh, fellowship on March 11 uh, so you are all welcome to uh, join us if your fellowship doesn't collide with our schedule and so the March 11th will be in my uh, house and Again, you are invited, and we are going to continue on the similar topics. And each each night, we are going to uh, every uh, second and the fourth uh, Friday, uh, 8 p.m., we are going to uh, meet uh, in respective houses. So, um, and then every uh, night, so every fellowship will start with uh, uh, scripture and then uh, sharing of uh, how the life, uh, how the, the Lord is. Uh, doing in our uh, family uh, either uh, good or uh, or the difficult ones so uh, so that's a kind of uh, so this uh, Sunday school will come to a pause and uh, but the, the, the topic will continue will carry on in that fellowship so uh, yeah it's so encouraging that <coughs> yes are, are, are doing that because, as he said, we only scratch the surface, and you all know that. And so the, the everyday living and the everyday growth, based on the principles of Scripture, the commands of God, has to continue until it transforms all of us, all of us, all of our kids. And as we do that, um, the heightened enthusiasm and zeal will definitely caused a earthquake in the, in the church and in the society because now you see things differently. You'll proclaim it differently and you will be confident that God is right and you will be encouraged that you are personally growing in this endeavor. So I'm, I'm so encouraged that, that uh, Elder Jeff 
is starting that, and we will always have the opportunity, and you should always, whenever possible, have these com conversations with one another. How, how are things going? Uh, how, how are your kids? And what are you doing differently now? And, and what, uh, what are some of the challenges that you have? So these are the kinds of questions that you should be talking about all the time. Uh, not, not just with one another in this classroom, everybody who ever came to this class, but on the outside so that you can start feeding them and sowing seeds in their hearts about the kinds of things that can be possible, okay? So it's been indeed a, a privilege. I have, I'm, from the beginning, I was so encouraged that so many of you were actually interested in mil marriage building and then followed that up with parenting. So my, my heart was was overjoyed and you know the emotions of course appropriately came out. So thank you so much. I think I take a class lesson to end today's uh, this uh, kind of two semester. Uh, I, I, we can have a a group class. Uh, like I don't know where the picture. Yeah, group picture. Uh, <laughs> uh, the screen. Yeah, oh. just push that. Actually, I have, a, I have some suggestions. The Chinese side didn't announce this. Oh. So they didn't announce this. And the second thing is that uh, if there's constant conflict between the Friday night uh, fellowship with this fellowship, I don't think a lot of people can benefit from that. So is it possible to change it to like Sunday afternoon or something? Also, the location is not, it's probably not ideal for a lot of folks. Yeah. So yeah. Like English, uh, but, but we also want to go. <laughs> <laughs> so, Don't leave us out. That's good. So I love that. Can we yeah. switch to like Sunday? I'll, I'll take that uh, input. Yeah, I'll take that input. That's really good. That's a good problem to have. Right? <laughs> That's a good problem to have. Yeah. It's a very good problem to have. I'm going to have to check that out.